Well, there's a special kind of happy hour happening at the Spokane Arena. Brandon T. Jones is there live with the details. Concerts are on their way back to the Spokane area and the Spokane Arena is giving away some free tickets. I'll tell you all about how you can get your hands on some of those in just a few minutes. And we're going to take you outside, talk snow coming down in some of the higher elevations around the inland northwest and rain down low. I'll let you know when that rain moves into Spokane. And Amazon issued a new mask policy for employees. This morning, how the tech company is now verifying who's been vaccinated. Up with Crim begins now. Well, in case you missed it, we got some showers yesterday. Wash.east tweeted out this gift saying, I can't remember the last time it <laughs> rained. That's I can't so either. Cute. Well, they also wanted to remind everyone to, of course, take it easy on the roads if you encounter any of that rain and always drive for the conditions. Yeah, it's a little bit slick out there since we haven't had rain in a while. The oil's on the road uh, makes it a little bit more, I don't know, maybe a little bit more dangerous, but yeah, hey, just be careful. We need yeah, it always. for the trees. We need it for, as we're going into wildfire season. This week, we've really talked about how to prevent some of that wildfires and rain. Jeremy mm -hmm. is one of the biggest ones, right? Yeah, yeah. Dan Marie, you're speaking nothing but facts right now. <laughs> speaking my language. Language. Well, well, Jeremy, you said you had faith it would rain and you were right. So what does this mean for our drought situation? So, all right, this is a really interesting one to explain. I always love trying to explain this. So the drought monitor updates every Tuesday. We see the updates come out on Thursday. So we will get that drought monitor update here in the next few hours. However, it's likely to get worse because it doesn't factor in this rain we are seeing now. It'll take a little while for this to be factored in, but we really need a sustained rain. We need more than just a day to start to see impacts on our drought conditions. And it looks like the forecast might offer just that. And when it comes to the higher elevations getting snow, this is really, really good. And the reason is it takes a lot longer for snow to melt than it does for rain to just fall and run off a mountain. So that slow release adds to our groundwater and our water table in a much better way. And we're seeing that snow come down, the rain start to move and just look, look in here where we are starting to see some of those heavier bands of showers move down Interstate 90. They're starting to encroach on us here in eastern Washington, and I do think they wind up moving in here within about the next hour. We'll start to see some of that moisture here in Spokane, and then it just continues. I think 9 a.m. is the heaviest of that rain for us, and later on this afternoon, that rain starts winding down, tapering off, moving out of the region, and we'll start drying out across the inland northwest as we head into the weekend. However, there are chances of lingering showers the next few days, which is good news. And here for us in Spokane, I do think we get rain and last through the middle part of the day, but look what it does to our temps. We stay in the 40s most of the day and top out in the low 50s later on this afternoon. Now to our big story at 630. 35 House Republicans joined with Democrats to pass a 9-11 style commission to investigate the January 6th assault on the U.S. Capitol. Well, it passed the House yesterday, but it's unclear if it has enough Republican support to pass the Senate. The commission would be equally divided between Republicans and Democrats. Ohio Democrat Tim Ryan scolded the 175 Republicans who voted against the bill. We have people scaling the Capitol, hitting the Capitol Police with lead pipes across the head, and we can't get bipartisanship. Now, Senate Majority Leader Chuck, Sch Chuck Schumer promised to bring the bill to a vote, but it faces an uphill battle in the divided chamber where 10 Republicans are needed to overcome a GOP filibuster. The family of the Capitol Police officers who died by suicide in the aftermath of the attack said in a statement that it supports the creation of a commission. Today, the House will vote on a $1.9 billion package to improve security on the Capitol. Well, in an effort to encourage more people in Spokane to get vaccinated, a special event is brewing at the Spokane Arena. Ah, I see what you did there. Brandon T. Jones live at the arena this morning to tell us more about the vaccine happy hour. Brandon, I think it's safe to say everyone loves a good happy hour. Yes. Well, over the next few weeks, there's going to be four happy hour vaccine events right here at the Spokane Arena. There's going to be vendors, music, concert ticket giveaways accompanied by a single dose of the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. So here are some of those dates that you need to know if you want to get your hands on some of those tickets. So 
May 25th, you could win tickets to go see Dude Perfect. There's a lot of different genres you can actually uh, get tickets to as well. Eric Church tickets will be given away on June 2nd. On June 8th, you could win tickets to see The Weeknd. And if you're a fan of Jason Aldean and country music, you want to stop by the happy hour on June 16th. The event runs from 5 to 7 p.m. on each of these four dates I just mentioned. People who go can get an I'm vaccinated photo with Spokane Shocks mascot, Shocks the Fox, and the Spokane Chiefs mascot, Boomer. You can either sign up online and they're also doing walk-up appointments. You can also send us a text message with the word vaccine to 509 448 2000 and we'll send you all the information you need to know on these vaccine happy hours accompanied with information on these concerts from spokane brandon t jones from two news brandon thank you well amazon is ending its mask mandate for many of its fully vaccinated warehouse workers well this change goes into effect on monday now it does apply to employees in areas where local regulations don't require facial coverings Amazon officials say eligible workers will have to have a vaccination card and prove it's been at least two weeks since their final COVID-19 vaccine dose. They say fully vaccinated employees can continue to wear masks if they choose to do so. Meanwhile, other businesses are still trying to figure out how to cope with the latest CDC mask guidelines. Boeing employees in Utah can opt to work without a mask outside starting on Monday. Now, as long as they volunteer their vaccination status. Boeing workers in Washington state don't yet have that option. We spoke with a Seattle based employment lawyer about whether employers could ask about vaccination status. I think the right prediction for where the government uh, announcements are going to be is that employers can ask for proof of a vaccination. Employers are in a tough spot and they need to work through their values about whether it's really a business necessity that their employees are vaccinated or not. Employers need to keep vaccination status confidential under federal rules. The state says it's planning to release guidance on this. Well, you may have seen this story on your social media this week. A Delta passenger is facing potential fines for $52,000 while on a flight from Hawaii to Seattle. Now, the FAA reports he assaulted a flight attendant and attempting to open the cockpit. The agency added that they were able to return the man with plastic hand restraint, excuse me, with plastic handcuffs. However, he did free himself from one of those handcuffs and struck the flight attendant in the face a second time. Now, after the aircraft landed, Police took the passenger into custody this morning. We're asking you, do you think a $52,000 fine was too much or not enough for the man? Text us 509-448-2000. Let us know. Join our conversation this morning. This is definitely an interesting one circulating social media. This is not the first time this flight passenger landed themselves a soaring flying either. Well, in January 2020, another passenger from Southwest Airlines flight from Arizona to Chicago faced a $27,000 fine after allegedly yelling and forcefully banging his hands on the seat in front of him, disturbing nearby passengers. And in February of this year, a male passenger is facing a potential $18,000 fine after allegedly drinking several mini bottles of alcohol that the airline had not served him and continually removing his mask or wearing it inappropriately. So on that same month, a man had a $9,000 fine after not wearing her mask. So definitely uh, hefty fines there wow. coming out of airlines. Just don't assault flight attendants. Yeah. Take, keep your drinking under control or just pay the flight to serve you. This, this sounds like mask. scary, easy things. Uh, okay, pro tip, follow the rules. Be a pro nice tip. person. For real. Also, at what point do fines not do anything? Like yeah. if you're racking up that many right. fines, sorry, you're just banned. Yeah, like, yeah. like get, good luck. I hope you like driving. Seriously. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that, Dana Marie. We always love checking in on what's trending and again, weigh in by texting us 509-448-2000. All right, just about 640 here. This week marked 41 years since Mount St. Helens erupted. Now experts turn their focus to another Northwest volcano with an explosive history. I'm excited for that, and I'm going to take you outside. We're talking needed rain returning to the inland northwest. Dry in Spokane right now. A couple of stray sprinkles this morning was about it. I'll let you know when the actual rain arrives.